Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. There you are, John. I suppose I should take off, but you look much better behind the screen. All right. Okay, that's fine. We'll we'll let you come out from hiding. How you doing? Wednesday night, RVing in New England. What, what the announce did you hear the announcer? He no. said, Here's your host, John DePietro and Bob Zagami, which implies that I should be speaking first and then bring you on. Well, that's true, but I'll just have the uh, I'll just have that edited and and reverse the names. That'll take care of that issue real quick. So John. Zagami, yes, um, I just got back from a long weekend of camping, and yep. then after this show, I've got some stuff to do, and then Friday, head out for another long week weekend of camping. Then I come back. And then you and I jump on a plane and head to the RV capital of the world, Elkhart, Indiana. That's right. Then we come back, and then a couple weeks go by, and then we head down to Hershey, Pennsylvania for America's largest RV show. That's right. And then we come back and, and then I go to out Elkhart. to, I go to Elkhart, Elkhart, Indiana, Indiana again. And then soon after that, I go to Las Vegas for the RVDA convention. Yeah, and then we go to the the Halos Wish event in um, Denver and Normandy Farms. Normandy yep. Farms, and then what? On there's a couple of days. There's another a couple of events going on. So it, you know what? People say, "Oh, we're winding down the RV season." No, we ain't. We're winding up. We're winding up our RV season. Exactly. And then you know what? It's it's the busy, busy time of year when late September and early October comes when. RVers from all over the world, not just from the United States and not just from New England, head to Vermont, Maine, and New Hampshire to see the fall foliage. And um, well, we well we jump into our guest, I want to do a little uh, congratulations because this this week, in fact, earlier this week, Jeff Hirsch, our good friend, CEO, and president of Campers in RV was inducted into the RV Hall of Fame, and we are delighted for him and his family. And the company was formed in 1966 by his father and mother, Art and Fran, on the front lawn with a couple of pop-up campers. And Jeff has, in his leadership of the company, built it up to 28 dealerships around the country, the largest family-owned dealership chain in the country, still family-owned assisted by Ben Hirsch, the COO. And uh, congratulations to Jeff Hirsch and all the people at Capra's in RV. Yeah, and you know what? The crazy story um, about that, and, and you were right there. I mean, I know you knew his parents way back 50 years ago. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, you were only 40 years old at the time when you met him 50 years ago. But right. the interesting thing is the whole reason that Camper's in got started is his parents went to buy an RV and got terrible service. Right. So the, the father said, Hey, I we can do can, this. We can do this better. Bought a couple, put them on his front yard, right? Yep. And, um, you know, and then what, 28 stores yep. and, yep. and well, hundreds of millions of dollars in sales later, Jeff is still guiding the company. And well, uh, yeah, that, that ties in with our guest tonight because it, he does. They said uh, Ben Hirsch is the COO. So we have the COO, the newly appointed COO. But no, no, no. You can't just say the newly. We need a, a drum roll because. Does that work? Okay. That's it's a low budget drum roll, but it will do. Okay. okay. All right. Because our guest tonight has just been announced as the new chief operating officer of a world. I don't know whether it's just North America or is it just what? But we'll well, find that out in a minute. The COO of the North America operation. Okay. He'll tell us. Of a worldwide if company. company. If you start talking and we can bring him on, then he'd tell us. I'm, I'm trying to build it up. Oh, I'm trying okay. to build it up. All right. Okay, go ahead. Just say, and here's Mark Holland. Go ahead. Just say that. Well, that, and, you know, I was going to say, here, here's our guest, Mark Holland, COO of Truma, 
North America. Mark, hi, Mark, welcome back to the show. You know, the last time you came here, you were only the senior VP of business development. Yes, I was. All that work. So, so in honor of you, my friend, I, I propose a toast because this is your first media. Is that milk to Pedro? It's a low budget gin. This is, <laughs> this is your first media appearance since being crowned COO of Truma. Welcome to RVing in New England once again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Cheers. We're delighted to have you. It's such always a pleasure. And Truma is always doing so many exciting things in the RV industry. And they're in Elkhart. He was since he was crowned COO. Wow. Yeah. Isn't this England? <laughs> I, I know Truma is a European company. German. 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 Yeah, yeah that's but great. That's not a monarchy anymore, right? <laughs> no. no I mean, it's a republic. So they don't crown people. Right. So I Mark. I might have got hit in the head, maybe. I don't know. Congra let, let's put it this way. Congratulations on your appointment. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank and it's great you. to be back say, with you guys. It's been a long good, time. Good say promotion. Look at look at the holy Christmas. Look at the people that have jumped in here. Well, Mark, I, I'm gonna get to you folks real quick, but they they have jumped, they really want to see. You know what, John? I'm disappointed. They must want to see Mark more than they want to see you and I tonight. This yeah, is they probably want to see me and Mark more than they want to see you. Uh, this is discouraging. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they'll chime in on what they're doing. So, Mark, what what do your new responsibilities encounter? Entail. Uh, entail. entail. Mark, the proper word is entail. Entail. But, okay. Yeah, I've got my dictionary tonight. Um. So. So my, my role continues, um, responsibilities continue to be sales. Um, we'll be having some additional announcements uh, very shortly as we look to grow the team, um, as we continue to grow in North America and adding uh, key leadership roles within the company. Um, we'll be adding additional resources in our sales department and our service team. And I will be overseeing sales, service, operations. Wow. For North America. Not for the world, John. Sorry. Uh, okay. Small no. steps. Small, small steps. steps. Yes. There's, and there's your new building in Elkhart. How long have you been in the building now? About three years, Mark? No, it's just over two years. Um, I believe years. the last pictures that you showed in April were we were still building the the, the building. Um, we're probably we're at a point now where we're, we're reaching. I, I think we had planned about a 10-year a plan here. For the square footage, but uh, I'm I'm looking at uh, more space. So um, we've grown a lot faster than we thought we would, and uh, our, our warehouse is getting fairly full. Um, I don't like to see uh, pallets lined up in the aisles, but um, we're, we're that's we're that's a there. beautiful, immaculate building. Yes. Immaculate. Thank you. Thank you. Not just the office side, but the part where you um, you know work on stuff. I don't know. I'm sure there's a more formal phrase than work on yeah, stuff. Yeah, so we have work on stuff. Yeah, no, we have our service area here. Um, we have two service bays. I'm actually so I'm I'm actually calling tonight from from our work RV and our Winnebago trend um, from our service bay. Um, I'm right beside our climate chamber, and I'll maybe I'll try later on. We can I can give you a quick uh, picture of what where I'm calling from. Um, so we have two service bays here. We can handle anything that uh, the RV industry can build. In our climate chamber, we can also handle up to a 53 foot by 14 feet high by 14 foot wide um, vehicle inside of that uh, chamber to do testing for heating and cooling. Yeah, that's what's what, what goes on in a climate chamber. So the climate chamber gives us the ability to work with our OEM partners on determining the best layout for our heating systems, um, evaluating the heating zones from front to back of the vehicle, side to side. We actually we actually use some standards, um, North uh, European standards that we brought over, um, and we've actually um, defined some some certifications for cold weather for our heating systems. And in the future, we'll talk a little bit more about our cooling systems as well, where we have established standards in Europe, which we brought over to North America. We're actually able to test vehicles within the chamber, offer changes to the vehicle for OEMs, um, and allow them to optimize the heating and the cooling inside vehicles. Where our, again, our, long, our goal is that consumers and campers 
have a comfortable camping experience. That's fantastic. Okay. You know, we got, um, you know that that climate cha uh, chamber is so big, John. I see Frank Palange is on here tonight. So that, that that climate change would hold Frank's new forty-five foot DRV monstrous fifth wheel. And seeing that you're on Frank, I assume you are still over at Bailey's, and that you are projecting this on the large screen TV in the recreation center up at Bailey, so that the other three thousand people who are camping up there are watching the show. So I'm going to be disappointed if you were not that creative. Right, John? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, there's John can't stop talking. No, ah. one, one quick thing. Lisa, I've sent you two private messages. You have to send me your address and telephone number so that I can send you, I can have the people at GoPower send you the Dura pack that you won three weeks ago. You know, the only one that we haven't shipped out yet. So, okay. So let me ask Mark a question. So you um, want to do business? Uh, what's that? You want to do business? Yeah, I want to ask Mark a question. Mark, um, unless I miss something along the way here, when I think of Truma, the first thing I think of is hot water, instant hot water. Okay. Yes. And lately, with that product that is right above your right shoulder to our left, um, the announcement of the air conditioner availability. Mm -hmm. Now, are you telling me there are other heating products for climate control that I'm not aware of, or just am I out to lunch? You're out to lunch. Maybe a little bit out to lunch. So um, Truma, Truma's <laughs> been founded, and our, our niche is, is in the heating side. Um, in comfort, um, we've been selling heating systems since 1961. So we've been, okay. we are the uh, one of the first suppliers to allow systems and people to go up into the mountains in, in Bavaria in the German Alps um, to enjoy winter skiing and camping with heating systems. Um, so in North America, we do sell our Truma Combi, which is a combination furnace hot water, very unique product, um, offers electric and propane. And now we also offer a diesel system. So you can have different fuel options. This is the, the Truma Aquago, which is our on-demand hot water heating system, which we introduced to the North American market in 2015. Um, that gives you continuous hot water, and here's here's our heating system. So the top line shows our, our our combi systems, which is a combination heating hot water system. You'll find these in smaller vehicles, Class Bs mainly. Um, a lot of some of the smaller trailers, truck campers, and now we, uh, about two years ago we introduced the Truma Vario Heat, which is a small compact furnace, which is really taken off. Um, and again, provides near silent operation um, to to the customers when they're camping. You know, I, okay. I did I did a product evaluation on the Winnebago Bolt two or three years ago. I took it out to the Grand National Rally, and it was equipped with the combi unit. And besides being easy to use, because I am not technically competent at all, I could you know I figured it out without the manual. And that's a major accomplishment for me, but. But you're right, for Class Bs and B pluses and, you know, these new camper vans that are coming out, you've got a tremendous lineup of product there. Yeah, definitely we're focused as well um, a lot on efficiency. So ensuring as a, as a European company in, in Germany, um, the expectations of quality as well as efficiency and um, being somewhat green. So using as least amount of power as, as needed to provide the experience as well as the Europeans like quiet, right? So they want to enjoy the outdoors. So having having a, a heating system, um, and we'll talk more about uh, the other systems a little bit about. later, but on the heating, about, sorry. Yes. Well, there's a, there's a Canadian. Myself, I gave myself away. There's, there's a Canadian. Yeah, so, so Mark, yes. um, you know, you said uh, Europeans like quiet. And just before we came on the air, um, I said to you, or you said to me, that's the new... Um, <laughs> Aventa. Aventa air conditioner. And you said, is it too loud? And Bob and I both said, well, we, we I can't know. even hear it. Now, right. if in the, the unit that I have in my Winnebago product, yes. if, if I have the air conditioner on, and I don't even know what brand it is, my wife and I have to yell across the room 
It's just like when you bring a couple of, t- of several Italians together for a meal, they yell across the room. Well, I don't know if you can show right now that air conditioner is on. And even if you bring your microphone, yeah, why don't you bring, uh, the, phone, bring the phone up? You, you, so folks, you, can, you, sorry, you folks are that. going to be amazed. You cannot hear this oh, air conditioner. It is actually, and I don't have a lot of hair to see, and this is a fairly compact uh, vehicle, but uh, it is blowing out air here. I've got the microphone as close as I can to the to the fan system here, so. Okay, um, let's let's ask Ryan Hadley, who I see on there. Ryan, do you hear that? No, do you hear any? Noise coming from that air conditioning unit, or or Frank Palanch, I mean, or Jason Cole, or Rick Kessler. Do you hear any right. sound? Is there any evidence of that thing running? None. None that none I here. Don't. Maybe I need a piece of paper so you can see the the air that is actually blowing out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walter Swenson says he needs some beta testers if if you need one. <laughs> That's Walter. Walter never misses an opportunity to get his plug in there. Yeah. Frank doesn't hear it. Dante says, I can't hear anything. <laughs> uh, and Ryan Hadley made a smart guy comment. Just you talking, John. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, if you're going to be a smart guy, uh, so, spell my name properly, sir. See, he's, he's, being, he's being polite. It's a nice way of saying, John, shut up. I <laughs> want to hear you, John. <laughs> she just doesn't want to hear you, John. Oh, God. But I think that's absolutely must be. Talk about that product because it kind of just... It, it kind of just got some some ink lately as being available. Is, is it available yeah. as an aftermarket product or okay. only with a so, new equipment? Yeah, so we are still, the product is not uh, um, currently available. We're still finishing the, the testing. We're preparing for launch and production. Um, right now, there is, the, the product is designed specifically for our OEM customers. So we do not have immediate plans um, as people have seen the product, there is a, an expectation to offer it to the aftermarket. Our focus on launch will be to our OEM customers first. So I encourage people to, to go to their dealers and talk to their OEM representatives uh, to ask for the product. Um, we, we, do, we are looking at how we can make it uh, available to the aftermarket, but that will probably come um, later into 2022. Mark, let's talk a little bit about product development and rollouts for Truma. Because one of the things that impressed me when you first launched in 2013 was you came in with a methodical business plan and you were not going to be the biggest, you were not going to be the fastest, you were going to do it right. And I know from our relationship through the years that you were fully prepared to back everything up on service before you ever sold your first unit. So Give us the philosophy of Truma when they design and bring a new product to the marketplace, please. Well, I can tell you that the development of this product has been probably over the last three and a half years of my life here at Truma. So it's been a long time coming. Um, we do we do invest a lot of time up front, understanding market needs, market expectations. Um, and then we put a lot of effort into the engineering. So we've been testing actually this product for the last year. Um, in the field, we've had testers. I know, the, I know we've had a lot of people come forward and say, I'd like to test. Um, we, we, are, we are somewhat nearing the end of that process right now. Uh, so unfortunately, we're not looking for testers. Um, process. There's, there's another process. Canadian word. Process? Process. process. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oxford, Oxford English Dictionary, John. Oot. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there's multiple pronun- pronunciations the british pronunciation um, okay <laughs> so, so yeah so we are um so we spend a lot of time with our engineers i actually have uh, engineers over here from germany this week as well working with us as we finalize getting prepared to launch the product um, we're still continuing to do testing um, but we do we do have probably about 25 end users that we have actively been testing with um, since uh, late, uh, early fall of, of last year, um, which during the pandemic was a little bit of a, a hassle to make, make it happen. And Bob, back to your, your original question with regards to our um, st- strategy and entering into the market. Um, yes, definitely we want to make sure that we're scaling properly, that we have the proper resources on the ground. Um, having the facility here in Elkhart, having service um, in Florida, service in Arizona, service in Texas with our own mobile service techs. 
having a dedicated service area here in Elkhart where we can repair support. Um, we're actually just finishing up expansion of our call center um, so we can add more resources there to ensure that the, the experience for the consumer is as high as possible. Mm. Now, Mark, can I? Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I just I just don't want to neglect our fans because they're all over the marketplace here today. Uh, well, let, let me, me make a comment while you're while you're figuring out what fans to talk to because I think this is very important and I think our fans will be impressed yep. with this little backstage story that I noticed with Mark. Um, and you know what? Our fans are always impressed with everything that I have to say, so this is certainly going to be no exception. Now. <laughs> God. <laughs> Three years ago, Zagami, don't scratch your head because the glare, uh, glare <laughs> is coming too much for the TV. Uh, so, three years ago, my wife and I were out at Winnebago um, for the big Grand National Rally. And actually, we we're doing this show, this Wednesday night show with, um, with Mike Happy, the CEO of, see, president and CEO of Winnebago. Um, and parked right next to us was a brand new Winnebago Navion product, Navion or View, um, that had a Truma system in it. And one of the techs was over there, um, you know, with the cover was off and the people saying it's not working, et cetera. Then he came back with another guy with a white shirt and um, glasses, uh, not a lot of hair. And I realized that that was Thank that you. guy that I had met at the RV show in, I, I think it was in, because um, he was wearing a skirt and they were handing out cookies. That was, that was Louisville. That was in the, Louisville. German, those, were, those were Lederhosen. Can we okay. add that part okay. to okay. That was, that was, that was Louisville and the German Christmas Thanks, party, Donald. which I still have my mugs from. Right. But, Good. but here's this guy at an executive level down underneath the Winnebago product, uh, yelling up to his his cohort about, uh, is this connected, is that connected, et cetera. And I said to my wife, right then and there, I said, I know who that guy is, but I don't know his name. And I said, but I'm impressed that somebody at the marketing level would be getting his hands dirty and getting his knuckles scraped to do that. And you know what? Three years later, he's the COO. And I think it's a very... It's very important because there are a lot of people in the RV related industry that, number one, don't RV, don't know what an RV is, and would never do what I saw Mark doing. So, Mark, I think that evidently somebody else at the corporate level um, saw what your dedication was to the product, and um, you're rewarded with that um, title. Thank you very much. Thank We're you, delighted Doug. for you. Okay. Go, Very go ahead. From Cape Cod. Maria's on from El Oh, Maria's out there in Elkhart at the fairgrounds. Okay. Um, you doing anything special while you're out there in Elkhart, Maria? Dante's on. Good evening, Dante. Maria says, oh, bummer, I am here now. Okay. Don Haas from Texas down at the National RV Tr Training Academy. Uh, we National don't know if it's Don or Pat. Could be Pat. Well, it could be Pat. It could be both of them. Maria says we're... Were your, were your ears ringing? I was talking about Nerd to Today to the marketing rep for Riverstone. That's right. Keep keep promoting our brand, Maria. We we appreciate it. Jim Jim Roy. Good evening, guys. Jim does uh, Airstream res, uh, Airstream Restorations up in uh, Monmouth, Maine. Silver Moose Restorations. So Jim, you got to find a way to take those old Airstreams that you restore that are thirty and forty years old but sneak in a new Truma, Acrigo, or Combo unit in the Airstream. Lisa, again, Lisa, did you get my note? Uh, you got it. Don't, don't post it, but send and it. And he, he got it. She's got it down below. Down below. Okay. Walter. Walter is in Lebanon, New Hampshire at the Salmon Falls, John. Yeah. AOA. yeah. And Walter is at the place that we had the Blue Water people on as our guests a few months ago. And, um, Walter's there now. Walter was trying to do the rope course this afternoon and is watching now from his hospital room in <laughs> um, Lebanon, New Hampshire, because Walter tried to do a Tarzan thing on the rope course. And um, I think he's got several broken vertebrae and a broken arm. 
Frank's Frank's got your number. <laughs> and Frank, you didn't, you didn't. I don't think you responded yet to let me know if you're on the uh, live screen TV. Uh, Dante, my company is named Terma Inc. Uh, well, you want to explain the naming of Truma, Mark, which is yeah. very very interesting. Yeah. So Truma, Truma, we've been around, founded in in Munich, Germany, 1949. Our founder, Philip Price, uh, benefited. He was actually a teacher in post-World War II when, when Germany was uh, being controlled uh, by the Allies. Um, he, power and infrastructure was not, uh, was not uh, in, the, in the best shape at the time. And he, as a teacher, um, he wanted to be able to teach into the evening. And he had some old gas lanterns. He went and fixed up these lanterns and put them inside his house. So he was able to teach. His neighbors saw that he had light and they had none. And uh, as a little bit of an entrepreneur, he actually started producing gas lanterns. Um, from there, uh, part of uh, in starting his business, um, the, um, uh, the, uh, the Marshall Plan was introduced. And uh, Harry S. Truman was a was a, a strong proponent of that in supporting Germany, and he actually, in honor of of Truma Truman, um, he he named the company a uh, Truma, and he actually we have a letter that hangs in our um, our museum in Munich um, from Harry S. Truman, um, stating yes, uh, you know I'd be honored to have uh, have my name used uh, for your company. So that's still that's there. an interesting story. Yeah. Okay, so that Dante's got something similar there. All right, uh, Maria and Ryan's on. Jose from Rolling on TV. Evening, guys, and congratulations, Mark, on the promotion. Let me let me try to do something because I noticed Jose is on. So bear with me for two seconds because I want to show you something that Rolling on TV did, which I thought was fantastic. Oh, um, that's the old commercial. have a true Apple Go instant hot water system. You can expect to make a lot of new friends. You know, that that is one of my favorite commercials. And I know Jose is very bashful and very humble, but I know he conceived that and produced it as part of the relationship that you've had over the years with rolling on TV. But I thought, you know, that, that's one of those commercials where it doesn't have to be three minutes long. You get the, the gist of the product and you, you understand, especially if you've had showers in RVs that the first person up gets the hot water and the rest of you <laughs> come back in the afternoon. So talk a little bit about the commercial, but also, I don't, you call it continuous, you know, it's instant continuous hot water, but it's not an instant hot water tank. So explain the technology in layman's terms. About yeah, we, we, we do call it instant. We, it, um, we, we try to avoid the, the term tankless because we do have a um, part of our technology is a small mixing vessel. And the mixing vessel allows us to stabilize the, the temperature and it removes any spike. So um, most conventional on-demand hot water heaters, um, they don't have any tank in them. And what happens is when there's a demand for hot water, um, the burner will turn on, water will be flowing. So you'll have cold water for a while until the water heats up as it passes through the heat exchanger and it makes it out to the top. You shut the water off if you're trying to conserve water, which again, an on-demand water heater can be used in a boondocking situation as well. Um, and then the water will shut off the flow, which will shut off the burner. Our system actually retains approximately one liter from Canada, John, uh, of water <laughs> um, inside that. Almost tank. a quart, a little more than a quart. Just, uh, just about a quart. And, and that, that, that small amount of water, it, it acts as a buffer, but it also acts as a um, allowing you to have constant water. So when you turn the water back on, you have you don't have this cold shot of water. Um, we do sell a system um, which, uh, is, as John mentioned, in, in Winnebago uses this system and several other OEMs where we have continuous 
circulation of hot water to all the taps. So at any time you turn the tap on, you actually have hot water at the tap, which is somewhat unique. Um, it allows you to ensure that you're not wasting any of the hot water. So right. um, we want to be conservative as well. And, and again, as a uh, environmentally focused company, we want to ensure that um, you're, you're consuming or you're consuming the least amount of resources as possible. Well, mm -hmm. and to that, to that point, you weren't just jumping on the conservation bandwagon because of the nature of Europe and the, the vehicles and the conservation that was over there for years. You pioneered a lot of this technology that you brought to the States. Yes, and the, the AquaGo was actually designed, it was the first product that we designed specifically for the United States market. We don't sell that product um, in Europe at all, so it was specifically developed for this market. Why is that, Mark? Um, one, it's a technical reason in Europe. I mean, on-demand water heaters are fairly common within homes, hotels that you go to will have an on-demand water heater. The gas supply required, this is, the AquaGo uses 60,000 BTUs. The, um, the amount of energy gas, propane gas that needs to go in, um, the, the regulators do not allow for that in Europe. Okay. So by code, they have codes and rules that they don't allow that. No, it is a, te a technical thing. I yeah. didn't know. Let me just finish up uh, on the on the right side. Mark Polk is on from RV Education 101. I already mentioned a good friend, Jose, there. And Don, and we got Ryan Hadley. Ryan actually has a, well, first a statement. Quality products. I have installed a few of your products, and my customers are very happy. Lynette Hirschberger, hi from San Diego tonight. Home. Hold on a second. Home With, is Ohio. Yeah. From a, from a marketing perspective, Mark, what you should do is send Ryan a couple shirts that say Truma on them. Okay. So that when he is out, um, you know, working on RVs all over New England, if he's got a Truma shirt on, the person might say, well, what is that? And he'll say, well, while I'm here, you know, you your hot water system isn't what it could be. Right. Okay. He's one of our best. He's one of our best mobile independent tech. So we want to get him trained on your products. Sure, and that's that's we're more than open to do that. Have him be one of your mobile certified techs that uh, people can call. Walter says the climate chamber is almost as big as ours at work. We just we just we have computers inside. Have computers inside them. Yeah, <laughs> Bill Sell, great to learn about Truma. Uh, I can't understand the German that he said there. Sarah Gut. Yeah. John and Mark. Okay. Frank. I don't speak German either. Frank though. says, I can wow. lie. I can lie and tell you. Tell your. Tell you you're correct. And, or I can tell you I'm watching it on my cell phone. So so he's outside having a beer watching it on a cell phone. Okay. Frank. Probably having more than a beer. Well, maybe. All right. Frank Kate says, hey, you all from uh, Salem. And. Linda says, okay, we'll do, Bob. Rick Kessler says, hello, Bob and John. Mark, congratulations on your promotion. Rick Kessler, of course, Thanks, is Rick. the managing editor and director over at our friends at RV Business. And, Bob, he joined us in the first quarter hour of the show tonight, not the 50th minute like he usually did. And that, that's because that's Mark is on. If, it, if Mark wasn't on, he probably wouldn't show up at all. You know, he's just, you know, greasing the skids. He wants to make sure Truma keeps advertising in RV business. He's just, he's just a good businessman. That's all. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't read the, he, if he was here at 701, when Mark said that, you know what, we want to be a year round sponsor of RVing in New England and we're going to take our budget from RV business. <laughs> right. He missed that. That's right. He missed that part. <laughs> if he come in earlier, he would have figured that out. Uh, Ryan says, do you guys offer any online factory training for techs to get certified or accommodated to your product? Acclimated. Acc acclimated. Yeah, acclimated. Yeah. Yeah. So what does Ryan do to get trained? Uh, what does Ryan do to get trained? Um, send an email to training at trumacorp.com. Um, we are, again, as part of our kind of development, we are working on, and especially with COVID, we've seen the need to have some webinar available training. Um, in order to install the AquaGo, though, it is all a um, self-administered training. So if you're interested in, in becoming a um, dealer for the Aquago, we can we can support that as well, um, and that's all self self driven. Yeah, he's 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 good. He 
he's building up a really nice business there. So we'll we'll make sure that he gets all of that stuff going for you. Uh, you forgot to say you skipped Jason Cole. I, no, I said hello, Jason. Oh, you did. Okay. You mean thin, thin Jason Cole? Yes, the new man. The new man. The new man. The new thin Jason Cole. Uh, okay. Dante says, can't hear anything. Oh, they were talking about when you were testing out the uh, air conditioner. Air Mark, conditioner. Uh, Rick says, has Mark talked about the climate control room at the Alkai facility? Yes, Mr. Kessler. And if you had been here at 7 o'clock, the show starts at 7 o'clock. And if you had been here, you would have heard that discussion. But you can always watch the replay because we archive all of our shows and you can watch them anytime you'd like. And if you tell people about this show in an upcoming edition of RV Business Daily Newsletter, then more people can watch it and That's more right. people can hear us talking about Rick Kessler. That's right. You can put it in the newsletter tomorrow and say, man, you should have watched this show last night. Uh, now, see, Mark, our fans are so dedicated. See Billy's comment there? They apologize when they come in late. And Kessler, you forgot to apologize tonight, but it's been you know, seven or eight weeks since you've been Bob, on. Bob, if 13 minutes late for Kessler is like being early. Early, that's true. That's okay. true. But see, Billy's Billy's on. Billy's the uh, general manager up at Loon's Haven Camp Family Campground up in Naples, Maine, celebrating this 60th anniversary this year. And if you look closely, she didn't say, sorry, I'm late. She made three sentences out of that. Bob, can you put that back? Uh, where'd she go? Yeah, there you are. Yeah. Sorry, period. I'm, I'm late. She's, you are really on your English game. Hey, she's, she's a Don Barone. She thinks she's Don yeah. Barone tonight. Hey, check, check this out, guys. Let's see. <laughs> See, most of you folks don't know Matt Johnson, but Mark and I know Matt Johnson. And Matt, I'm guessing this is the first time that you've watched our show. So, Mark, it's, it's got to be you. See, we put out these notices. The COO of Truma, Matt Johnson, who is in charge of all the technical service and technical training at Lippert Components. And I'm talking here in the States. Over in Europe, he is the top man, right, Mark? He's, he's hello, Matt. Wait, wait, wait. That that startup little company in Elkhart that does about a billion dollars a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Brian says I will send an email. Billy McNamara says first thing must apologize. See, that's that's right. Uh, Billy says I wanted to make sure. You knew I was really sorry. Oh, Billy, you don't even have, you, you, we'd even let you lose on, on that. But you, you, I know you're working so hard on the 60th anniversary. All right, ask, uh, hey guys, let's uh, get some questions from the fans there on that end of it. Mark, I wanted to, I want to put up a picture of my favorite Truma product. Uh huh. Talk, cooler. talk about the Truma Coolers, that whole line of products that you've got there. Truma Cooler, Truma Cooler. Say that five times fast. Truma with, a, with a New England accent. Truma Cooler. Truma Cooler. I don't know. Ah. I don't know. Um, you, I so, get we got, we, so we introduced the, the, our portable fridge freezer line um, last year, 2019, January. Um, we sell that uh, direct to consumers. There's products that are being installed right now into recreational vehicles, both truck campers, class B's, um, uh, fifth wheels, class A systems. That's our insulated um, sleeve. So you can cover to, to protect and keep the, the heat away from the unit and keep the cold in. Um, these units range from a 30 liter up to a 105 liter in size. Um, they're robust. They were designed. hold on. Sorry, stop for a second. You, you got healthy fruits and vegetables in that one, and in the other picture, you got yogurt and sherbet and salmon and vegetables. Right. Where's the beer? I was going to say, if you want to sell <laughs> that in the American, if you want to sell that in the American market. Yeah. The yeah. hell with all that healthy stuff. Go right to the beer. Yo, Frank. Frank's up here in Bailey. A hell of a lot more. Frank, Frank's up here in Bailey. Uh, Look at this notes thing, for our marketing. Where's my assortment of beer that I want outside my beautiful <laughs> oh, BRV? You gotta have beer. 
And some of that uh, flavored seltzer and the alcoholic seltzer, too, now. Yes. Okay. Or Those get a Budweiser good. get a Budweiser sticker on it saying, uh, you know. Mark, you know uh, so, you, so maybe you know, Bob, just, to, just to, to quickly, actually, I have um, what, what's interesting is we just launched our, our new C60 here, and I wanted to show – I'm just going to flip around here. Hopefully, I don't lose you guys. Yeah, and if you want to take a walk outside, you can show Yeah, us I'm going to take a walk outside as well. But um, this is our new C30 um, unit here. Uh, sorry, this is where it gets kind of wonky. I'm not... And it actually fits great in the ProMaster between the seats on the vehicle. So this unit, you can plug it into the 12 volt in your lighter. Um, and... Uh, yeah, you can have drinks while you're driving down the road here. Um, you mean you mean sherbet and stuff? You, or sherbet like, and strawberry. Coca-Cola, like, Coca-Cola, water. Coca-Cola and, right. and maybe a... Yeah, we, don't, we don't want to get Puma in trouble there. Right? Oh. So I'm going to take a walk out of the, the RV here um, and uh, just give you guys a, a little bit more information about the, um, about the air conditioner so that you have a... a first hands-on look and and again you guys have had some exclusivity here so this is the this is the air distributor that you saw that was above my head um we have that's the inside there. part this is this is what goes on the inside yeah so you can see in here that's where it attaches to the the air conditioner here um filter filter on the side um we have the ability to shift the air all the way to the front, all the way to the back. Ah. We have, um, and it's quite quite interesting here, some technology here where we actually um, were able to, to rotate the, the air up and down as well as we have the ability to individually... Left um, and right. Left and right on both sides, right? So you can direct the air wow. um, exactly where you want it to go. Um, this one thing that you... Um, didn't know it inside, but this is fairly thin, so it does give you added headroom um, if you're vertically um, challenged like myself and kind of tall and hitting yourself, hitting your head on the, the roof um, inside the vehicle. This will give you a more streamlined uh, look and reduce that overall height inside the vehicle. Okay, um, that is that is operated by a remote control um, as well as our CP Plus control, where we can link it into our other products. Um, the other thing that's that's really interesting about our product and, and allows us to be a little bit lighter um, with the system is this EPP housing that we use. So this forms the the base of the unit here. You can see this is what the air conditioner looks like. This is our black version here. Um, this is uh, this is the front end here, looking to the back, um, and this EPP foam here um, is a, is a molded foam, um, extremely light, um, so that that helps reduce the weight uh, of the unit. Um, again, giving you more carrying capacity inside the vehicle. Um, you can see again here what we've designed inside this molding is we're actually able to place all of the major components of the unit inside there. I'm just gonna pop the top off. So the cover, um, it's, a, it's a plastic cover here. And just so you get a, a feel for some of the technology, um, we just happened to have removed a, uh, uh, I'll, I'll call it a competitor air conditioner, um, just so you get a feel for kind of technology that exists today um, in the market, this, this fan here is actually, this is our equivalent of this fan. Um, so it's a, a much larger fan. Um, we spent a lot of time on the design side of this, ensuring that the condenser, um, your condenser side here is balanced with the evaporator. Um, your compressor here, you can see there, if you look down, um, we have some, oh, it's kind of hard to see, sorry. Um, you, you can see there that we have some springs mounting the, 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 the compressor springs here so it actually acts Vibration. as a shock absorber um, as yeah. going down the road um, yeah and, it, and again all of this is, is designed to maximize the, the heat transfer from inside the vehicle okay some of these components again you can see the this is a highly balanced uh, fan this is the fan that, that would actually distribute the air inside the, the vehicle um, this actually <laughs> these, these are quite heavy because they're they're um, highly um, 
intricate uh, fan systems here, um, balanced and uh, um, best best in class technology as far as what we what we're using in this system. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah, you know, we've, we've got a question. Okay. Um, two questions. Are your AC units low profile on the roof? And secondly, with a 14 by 14 opening, regular 14 by 14 opening to install the units? 14 by 14, yes. Um, low profile, yes. There you can see the unit installed on our vehicle. Yep. Um, by the way, I wear an L. <laughs> who, I, who, who asked that question? Because uh, they may have missed earlier in the program that the first stage of rollout is going to be to the OEMs, and then that'll be followed yeah. by the market product. So that, that leads me to believe somebody wants to buy it and install it right away. Yeah. Well, you yeah, know what? We, Jim, Jim Roy had asked if there was going to be um, um, product available for him to start putting into his restorations frank polange asked do you have heat pumps do they have heat pumps we do not have a heat pump and my my quick answer to that is that we sell heating systems um so if you want a a very efficient <laughs> um heating system um one of the other things sorry guys I, I'll, I'll i'll jump back to that question um i i told you that it was quiet on the inside um <laughs> One of the other amazing things about this product, and I am all, I'm always uh, confused sometimes when I come outside the vehicle, um, but if you thought the noise inside was, was minimal, there's next to no noise on the outside. So again, in the European market, noise between the RVs is, is very important in disturbing your, your neighbor. Um, these, these fans that we have installed for the... Um, I'll flip the camera again here, um, but the the fans that we've installed for the for this uh, this system here is extremely silent. So these fans, when they are running, um, you cannot hear them. And we often, I often have to run back inside to make sure that the the air conditioner is actually working. Is on. Um, okay. You know, you're doing a you're doing a disservice to your company because you're teasing this, but it won't be available for a year or so. And I think there are several. Several of our audience members that would say, I either would love one of those right now because mine's starting to make too much noise, they're or ready, they're ready to write the checks. I've got customers that could use this product. Um, it, would, would it be unfair to ask you at this stage what you would expect that to retail for? Uh, you, can, you can just say yes, it's unfair. It would be a little bit unfair. I wouldn't. Uh, okay. Um, hey. I want to go back to something Mark said uh, about being quiet in the European campgrounds. When I was over to uh, Dusseldorf to Caravan Salon a couple of years ago, I walked through the campground there and I, I saw several in uh, Italy and Pompeii when we were there a few years back. We get a lot of criticism in the United States right now about crowded campgrounds and how close people are to their neighbors and the noise and what have you. Let me tell you. Go to Europe. Go to Europe. You won't complain. How tight you think an American campground is, you haven't seen anything yet. Right, Mark? I mean, they are right on top of each other, different angles. They squeeze them in every conceivable place. They yep. don't have the luxury resorts that we, we are very fortunate to have here in the States. Right, Mark? No, and, and definitely that goes in. So, uh, John, earlier you asked uh, kind of you know where we are in the market. We've been we've been selling air conditioners for over 15 years on the global um, the global market. Um, I often get asked, you know, why don't you bring those air conditioners to the North American market? Um, unfortunately, they don't meet one. They don't meet the standards. Two, they are running on 240 volt. We're running on 120 volts here in North America. But we have we do sell air conditioners in the European market. We sell them in in China. We also sell a lot of air conditioners in Australia, where it gets extremely hot. Mm. Hey, while we're at it here, I, I um, see that Mary Simone is watching. Mary Simone was responsible for our guest last week here on the show. But also Ryan Hadley, who, by the way, wears an extra large. <laughs> he said, by the way, I wear an extra large. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I'd like to get in contact. Where are you seeing Mary? 
Um, I'm watching on, um, see, I'm multitasking. I'm watching it on Facebook. So it mentions everybody who's watching. Oh, hi, Mary. Yep. Um, our general manager of, what is it? Aloft? AC. AC Hotel by Marriott in Worcester, Mass. Yeah. I see. I see. They had another movie coming to Worcester. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Several movies. The best Several hotel movies. GM in the country. Just ask yeah. us. We'll tell you. Yeah, Simone, you're the best. Uh, Ryan wants to know. I can get in contact. I think you've already given him that th that I'll training. You, I'll get you all the information, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, customers, Jim Roy again, the gentleman from up in Maine who um, does the vintage restorations. Low profile, small prints of the distribution box. Now, is that right above you? Is that the distribution box, Mark? Yeah, so that's the air distributor right there. Okay, and low noise are all great selling points. And yeah, Ryan asked, are your European, European units 240? European units are 240 volt, yes. But this, this product is designed specifically for the North American market, so it meets yep. North American standards. We will be offering a 13,500 and a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. Okay. Um, they will, I mentioned earlier that they will operate, uh, through a remote control remote. So this is yeah. a remote. Um, one of the other, one of the other key features as we were talking to, to customers and customers needs, um, we've introduced a dehumidification mode on here. So if you just wanted to try to reduce some of the dehumidification in your unit, and it's not necessarily that it's, you have a lot of heat, but you can just put it into dehumidification mode via the, the remote control. So there's this, a setting on here. Um, that you can allow to do that. Um, we have a, I, I talked about that we're quiet. Um, we actually even have a night mode to make it quieter. Um, <laughs> and um, Yeah, what can I say? Um, an extra cup holder as well. So um, yeah, we, again, part, part of that technology and, and thinking comes from our, our European um, design systems. And again, at nighttime, if you want it to reduce the noise, you can go into this night mode and it will make even outside more silent i don't know i don't know where i don't know where that one fits in the dictionary john yeah yeah more silent more silent that's interesting yeah. but bob you want to read jerry's thing or, or pump it up there because that's interesting we're just, we're just going to do just doing that yeah jerry yeah. says there's an expectation in the water heater market that aftermarket installs have the instant hot water that require the recirculating piping in a new vehicle install i don't understand that but I, so for I just, uh, yeah, we only sell our system, our, our Comfort Plus system that has the recirculation system is an only it's only designed for the OEM market because you do require a return circuit inside the vehicle. So we sell that unit um, direct to OEMs. We would sell our Comfort model to to the aftermarket, which does not have that circulation. Okay. Okay. That's pretty cool stuff. So, anything else on the drawing board that um, that that's out there? I know companies like yours are always looking at new aspects. I mean, I can't think of anything more you would need in a um, in an RV than hot water, hot air, cold air, and dry dry air. What what other uh, well, what other products are you yeah, selling in Europe? Let me, not let me show you. Let me show you right there. Every RV should have this in their RV. Everybody. And you can buy it at your dealer and your parts and accessory store. And Jerry Plant, I hope you're selling it down at Major's RV. I think you are. Want to yeah, talk about the level check? Yes. Tell them what that does, Mark. Yeah, so that uses, uh, again, uh, different technology for determining if there's liquid propane in your propane tank. It actually uses ultrasound, and it's calibrated for a um your your normal barbecue propane tanks um and the calibration uses uh, resonance time for the signal to travel across the tank and back to the to the reader um and then it tells you if there's liquid propane there or not um so it, you know if you have multiple propane tanks if you're about to leave and you've got your tank and it's bolted down you can quickly check that within a few seconds to to confirm so i know i get a lot of people that that give me the uh i i can tell that my tank is full by using their calibrated arm um 
but uh, definitely the, the most uh, accurate method is either to weigh it or to use, um, uh, to use ultrasound. And Mark, I think everybody who, and Bob, I'm sure you'll agree with this, but everybody out there who owns an RV will tell you that the gauges in the unit, the level checks in the unit, even including the level checks for the gray tank and the black tank are, are not accurate this way. <laughs> They're less than optimal. Right. right. Not, um, I just wanted to jump back. You had asked questions about other products. Um, yeah. One, one thing that we didn't touch on, uh, Bob and John, is that we do, we, we are the um, all day system, which is our hydronic heating system as well. Um, right. That comes out of our location here. We provide sales service and support for that product, which is developed and engineered and manufactured in our sister company in Sweden. Um, we are responsible for the distribution and sales of that product as well in North America. So that's a different technology. And John, just quickly, you know, other, other uh, product needs. Um, most of our products are designed for smaller, more compact um, vehicles. Um, we are, you know, we hope to in the future be able to offer a complete line to handle those 53 foot uh, fifth wheels that are out there as well. And, and those all day, I, I wonder what, Frank, what do you have for a heating system on the DRV? Because if you look at the Truma building over there on the left-hand side, you'll see the all day uh, logo on there. But I'm curious what you got uh, heating on that. Wow, it's seven fifty. These hours go so. Mark, I, I want to thank you very much. It's it's always fun to have you, but it, it, it's always nice to know what else uh, you bring to the marketplace with Truma. Uh, it's it's just gained such a great reputation for quality and service, and support, and and we're delighted that we could bring it to our fans tonight. Did I leave anything out, John? No, but Mark, send um send a couple Truma decals. And um, we'll have Ryan, you know, Ryan, the guy with the extra large T-shirt. Okay. Uh, he can put him on his truck. Put him on his truck. Okay. Because you know what? You never know, you know, who you run into when you have that, pro you know, those stickers on the truck. Yeah. Bob, send me his information. We'll, I, we'll I, get yep. him some swag out there. I, yep. I, I, yep. I will. Truma sure. Hot Water Suburban Heat. What does that mean? Truma Hot Water Suburban Heat, says Frank Palange. Um, oh, that's uh, I asked him what he had on it on his uh brand new DRV. There you go, the heating system. The, the Aquago, the Aquago is uh is available on the DRV models. Okay, all right, yep. super. All right, great show. Uh, great having you here. And I'm going to thanks, thanks guys. Appreciate you having me on board. And uh, and once you again, to, Hershey? to the new COO of Truma. Yes. Congratulations on the promotion. Right. Thank you. Thank you again, guys. John, yes, I will be at Hershey. Um, when you get to Hershey? Uh, in the evening. I mean, you'll be there the whole week. Uh, I'll, I will most likely be there at least Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay, our, good. We will have a booth there, and our team will be on the ground there. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, will have, we will have one of the air conditioners available that people can actually touch it and see it as well. Um, and we're working hard to see if we can get uh, one of our prototype units onto an OEM vehicle to, that people can have the same experience that you had with no noise all, all show. That's absolutely amazing. That's fantastic. Absolutely. All right. Uh, close it out with our video at the end. Mark, I'll see you in Hershey. We'll probably see you at Dealer Open House. And uh, thanks again for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye. This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.